Today I'm going to try to explain to you how I cope with doing the thing in miniature painting that I enjoy the very least. Let's talk about that. Hello. That's right folks, today we're going to be making a video specifically about something that I'm not particularly enthusiastic for. And I know that sounds weird. I, I talk at great length both on Twitter and I've even mentioned on YouTube about how the whole purpose of these videos is to, to communicate my passion for painting to you folks. And it, it would seem, you know, counterproductive to that to make a video about something that I'm telling you I dislike. Well, I also have a massive passion for playing Warhammer. I love to play Warhammer 40k. It's a fucking beautiful game. It's fun, it's interesting, it's a mental workout. It's social, it has so many positives going for it. But in order to fully feel immersed in and enjoy a game of 40k, I need to paint my miniatures. As you can imagine, I don't get a ton of time to paint my miniatures because I am a professional painter. So I'm painting other people's things all the time. So I am forced to that end to batch paint quite frequently. And batch painting is something that I really don't enjoy. So I tried to kind of go into the tank a bit and think about how I make batch painting something that I can cope with as someone who really dislikes it and how that might translate into some things that would perhaps make it a little bit easier for other folk who maybe in my position don't enjoy it or just want to get an idea of how to break stuff down into a kind of assembly line process to be able to batch paint say a squad. So in this case we're going to look at a squad of five word bearers from my personal collection. Uh, they're dressed in Mark III armour, so they are from the Horus Heresy plastic kit. That is a fantastic kit, the Mark III Horus Heresy kit. Uh, but they are painted in the in the current Legion colours. So um, we're going to head to downcam footage now and I'm going to show you how I get through all that. Okay, let's get into it. Here are five beautiful word berry boys all prepped and cleaned up and ready to go. Look at them! Are they cute? Yeah, they are. And here is me mixing some word bearers red for the airbrush. So I've just taken word bearers red and uh, thinner initially. And then what I'm also going to do in just a second is start to dump in some matte varnish to this. Now, this is very, very important. Um, word bearers red obviously isn't a primer, it doesn't have any kind of hardener in it. So by adding a bit of matte varnish in there, that's going to act as a hardener and it's going to still give me a good hard wearing base. But you can see that as I'm spraying it onto the miniatures, it's super, super thin, so I do need to do about three coats. But it's five miniatures, it takes no time. A hairdryer can dry the coats if you, uh, if you don't want to wait for them. So it's really not a lengthy process and uh, just having that matte in there just helps a bit. Now into Art Black from the Scale 75 Artist range. I love these paints, they are so beautiful to apply. And I'm just gonna use this to black out all of my black details. Uh, the reason I'm using this Scale 75 Artist Black is because it is one coat coverage over every single color I've tried painting it over. It's incredibly smooth, it's incredibly matte, it thins nicely, so it just makes that process of blacking in very, very quick and simple. Uh, you could use whatever black you prefer, but you know me, I'm a matte addict, so uh, it has to be it has to be super matte for me. You can see here, just getting the shoulder pads in as well. Smaller details that are going to be metallic, I don't pre-black. A um, couple of areas on the gun, obviously, that are going to be metallic that I pre-blacked. But as we work through those, we're now going to run into that dark aluminium from Viejo Metal Color. You see me use this all the time on the channel. And I just want to quickly illustrate here just how important having separate water for your metallics is. Tiniest amount of metallic. And look how much flake it leaves in that water. Just because you can't see it, it doesn't mean it ain't there. So use separate water for your metallics, kids. Okay, let's get that blocked in then. So all the trims, all the studs, which I admit, um, if you're painting Mark III armor, maybe don't bother painting all your studs in. Your choice. I don't. I sometimes miss a few. It's the slowest, most tedious part of the entire process is dotting all those studs in. I think on my next tactical squad I'm going to try not to dot in them in and see how it looks. Because of course, you know, the paint is applied to the armour. It could, it could, in theory, be applied over the rivets, which is what those are. So it, they don't have to be painted silver. 
get a few bits on the backpack blocked in there, some pipes and stuff, pipes on the back of the leg. Again, I don't always paint in those pipes on the back of the leg either, they're kind of louvers. Uh, I feel like they could sort of be either colour, either the armour colour or a metallic. But um, I'm just going to, in a second after I finish blocking in this metallic, just slow the footage down for a brief moment for you, just so you can see where we're up to at this stage. There you go. So we're looking alright, we're a bit untidy, but that's because we're painting fast. And we don't really want to be untidy, we want nice, neat looking Space Marines. So uh, we're just going to return now to both Word Bearers Red and uh, Carbon Black from the Scav 75 Artist range. And we're just going to go through and do our tidying up. We'll do our Word Bearers Red first, just tidy up any areas of that. The reason I use the air is because uh, you can still get pretty good coverage out of it straight out of the pot. So it's not any sort of specific preference. Uh, I own both the air and the normal one. I just tend to use the air because, if, especially if I've been doing airbrush, it's usually on hand. But we just uh, tidy up all these red bits first of all, going mini to mini. And uh, once we've got all those reds looking neat again, then we'll go into the blacks. And again, just anywhere that the black's got silver on it, we'll fix anywhere that it's sort of not quite looking nice and spiffy. We'll get that looking tasty. Very simple, straightforward process. A little tour around each miniature. Make it look super sexy. We want super sexy Space Marines. Okay, so now we're going to do something very, very cliche here. Uh, they call it liquid skill, those who like to take the piss. Uh, but we are going to do a really heavy all over Nuln Oil shade. Specifically, that works for me here because I'm not planning to do a ton of highlighting on the red. Because this is battle ready, I'm not going to spend ages anally highlighting red. So I want a strong colour difference still, so that I've got really good contrast. So doing a super heavy non oil wash, giving me those really deep, overly accentuated shadows, helps counteract the fact that I'm not going to highlight my red. So although it is a bit cliche to just effectively dip a miniature in non oil, and I know that people cringe a little bit at the thought of it, in this specific case it is the right thing to do. Um, just because it's going to give us all of the shading on the metallics that we need, it's going to give us all the shading on the red that we need, but we can also deliberately let it overly pool in certain areas just to create some deep contrast, make up for the fact that we're not going to do a ton of highlighting. Once we've done that to all our boys, we're now going to thin down some Word Bearers Red. I'm not thinning this a ton, it's not a glaze consistency, but I am thinning it to be transparent because I just want to use it to clean up any tea staining in that non oil. So I don't really need it to do a ton of covering here, more just smoothing out my surfaces. And I can also be super, super quick because the surfaces, they don't pick up a ton of staining from non oil anyway. It doesn't really take a lot of effort to get that covered. So we just whip around the miniature very quickly with some thin word bearers red and just get all of that non oil staining on the surface, just looking a little bit nicer, looking a bit more even and, and not like coffee stains or tea stains or whatever you prefer to call them. I suppose it depends if you're a tea drinker or a coffee drinker, doesn't it? Next up is a colour that I don't feature often enough on this channel, the Harvey White from Scale Colour. Uh, this is a really nice, it's, it's got a good level of transparency to it, so I can mix it into black, which is what I'm doing here, and I can get nice, subtle, easy to build up grey highlights that aren't so strong that they look really chunky next to each other. Uh, so we're just whipping around here and starting to highlight some black, and you're going to see me do quite a few stages of very quick highlighting on black. So I'm not really, not really taking my time too much, I'm not really being super careful but I am going to do a good three or four stages of highlight and really bring it up, you know, to a good, solid, noticeable grey. Now the reason I'm doing that is, this doesn't actually take very long to do. Uh, all four stages across all five miniatures was probably 20 minutes, you know, not, not a heavy investment of time. But, in the same way that because we're not highlighting the red we want good contrast, because black is such a flat colour when it isn't highlighted, we can't really afford to do no highlighting to it at all, otherwise we end up with something that looks really, really basic. And we are trying to do a slightly posher battle ready here. You know, we want a battle ready that doesn't make the miniatures look out of place next to the beautifully painted characters that we're putting hours into. So, 
by making a point of highlighting those blacks, those blacks that would otherwise look really, really flat, we keep that illusion that there's, there's a lot more depth there than there actually is. Um, you can see now we're getting into a really quite a bright grey here and we're really starting to just edge highlight off of the very end of the brush. Um, but it's starting to come together, you know, it, it's, it's starting to have a good high contrast pop to it now, which is what we were after all along. Now I'm coming in with some black and doing some tidying up and again this is why you can afford to be fast with the highlighting because you can edge back into it with black to tidy it up. That's a really nice way of just uh, you know being able to get the effect of a nice edge highlight without having to sort of grind to a halt and really take your time with it. And now we're going to just start to stick some of that lovely Colchisian scribble all over our boys. Word bearers wouldn't be word bearers if they didn't have the text on them. And I do think even if you're only painting to battle ready, it really is important to take the time to do the text. It's, it's a key feature of word bearers. Same as, you know, if you were doing loyalist space marines that were covered in purity seals, I think it's important to put some scribble on those purity seals. It's just part of what makes them look complete and it really doesn't take very long. You know, as long as you've got a dead thin white, you're fine. The Boreal Green and Alien Goo are our next pairing, and I'm really just using these to dot the eyes in. They don't feature anywhere else in the workup. We start with pure Boreal Green, and then we mix a bit of Alien Goo into it to get a sort of medium green, and we apply a little central highlight to each eye. I'm just gonna rinse and repeat and do that on all five guys. Just literally two colors in the eye socket. No need to be uh, crazy here. Now we're going to base our boys with some Citadel Armageddon Jeans. Um, this isn't actually the last thing we're going to do on the miniatures themselves. They're not quite finished yet, but it's, the basing has to go in for the next stage to take place. So you'll see what that is in a minute. Um, it, it's, it's a finishing touch that takes a tabletop painted miniature and really makes it look like it's had a lot more effort put into it than it really has. So I think it's super important but the basin does have to be done first. So we're just slapping on some Citadel Technical. I will put grass tufts on some of these. I don't put any on these ones, but I do usually. And now we're gonna grab Revel Weathering Powders Sand Yellow. Now this is, this, is the, this is the business now. This is where you're gonna see the good stuff. Applied with a dry brush and a stabbing motion, and I do mean a completely dry brush. Um, and just a stabbing motion, you just stab it into the areas where you want it. And it starts to make your boys look all dusty, like they've been traipsing through the deserts of Colchis, which to me is exactly how I want my word bearers to look. Um, however, you can't really just put powders on, you do need to fix them, and there's a way that you can fix them and blend them back at the same time, which is using artist spirit. So that's what I've got here, mine is absolutely fucked, it's really dirty, yours will be nice and clean I'm sure. Uh, but we're going to grab that artist spirit and just with the tip of a brush just dot it onto each surface and you'll see it just spread very quickly. I've slowed the footage down deliberately here so that you can see the transformation take place. And where that powder starts off being quite stark and quite harsh, once you've set it like this, you're going to watch it instantly blend back. And you're actually going to see this happen before your very eyes. When I get it with a hairdryer to evaporate the spirit, you're going to see it both settle back, fix, and smoothen off and start to blend all in one fluid motion. It's a real thing of beauty to behold. Really, really recommend you try weathering powders. So now we've got all our white spirit dotted on. Now I'm gonna grab the hairdryer and watch this. Oh, it's magic. Ooh. There you go. You see all that chunkiness has come out of the powder now. It looks a lot cleaner, it blends back nicer. Just beautiful. And we're just going to repeat that process now on all of our fellas. Dab it on the spirit. Dab it on the spirit. Etc. 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 Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Final little very quick thing, some muddy brown from Reaper MSP. 
and uh, we are going to just rim the bases with this quick, quick rim job with our muddy brown. Beautiful, slap that all over. No need for any ceremony. Just get it on. I really like brown rims on desert bases. I tend to sort of tailor the colour of the rim to the base, but anyway, this is what you get at the end of it all. Look at those boys. They don't look like rushed tabletop jobs. They look a bit posh. They look a bit nice. They've got a bit of something about them. They're still very simple. They're still very easy. They're not going to blow anyone away. They're not going to win Golden Demon, but they've just got a little bit of extra oomph to them without investing a ton of extra time. And that is absolutely key for me for making match painting fun. I actually really had a good time painting these guys, and it's not very often I can say that with a match paint. When I did my 60 Cadians, I was in tears of misery. But there you go. There's our word bearers, folks. Enjoy them. And there you have it, my approach to batch painting. Uh, the main compromise there is me trying to figure a way that I can get something on the tabletop that I still think represents me somehow as a painter. Uh, so, you know, I include a couple of little tricks, a couple of little small things just to level up the look of that paint job. But at the same time, trying to be time sensitive, trying to keep it down to a crunch. So that squad of five took me about three and a half hours to paint. And I would say that that would mean I could probably get through a full tactical squad in a single sitting at least. If I was gonna sit down for sort of eight or nine hours and, and paint some of my own miniatures, I could probably get a tactical squad finish to that standard. I think that's really what you're going for with batch painting. You wanna be able to sort of complete a unit in a day. So whether that be spending a full day on a character model or a full day on a vehicle, or whether that be spending a full day on an entire squad. So as long as those batch painting methods break down into such a way that you feel like you can hit that target, I think that makes it pretty workable and you can generally get through an entire force. I'm currently about, I would say looking over at my shelf, about two thirds of the way to having my thousand points painted. And I'm pretty happy with that. So folks, thank you so much for joining me this week. I will see you next week with more. Don't forget to like and subscribe. It's so important for getting the video seen and out there. And I appreciate it very, very much. I'll see you in the next one, everybody. Bye for now.